Hey, 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 let's talk about being the real McCoy to supersize and grow your business. The real McCoy is an expression that they think could have a couple of different meanings. The first meaning is the one I buy into. And there was a boxer, a very talented, very good boxer named Norman Selby in the late 1800s. And he built himself or he called himself Kid McCoy. And he was so good that other boxers started to call themselves Kid McCoy because they wanted to, you know, ride on the coattails of his fame. We see that a lot nowadays, people copycatting and, and trying to be like and mimicking famous people. I mean, anybody that's famous now in this day and age of influencers, people are trying to copy them and be just like them. And there's challenges with that. But anyway, Kid McCoy, the real McCoy, had to actually bill himself as the real McCoy when he was in boxing matches because so many people were copycatting him. The other possible um, origin of this idiom was there was a an inventor in the late 1800s early 1900s named Elijah McCoy and he is most famous for inventing lubricated parts for steam engines and they think that maybe that was an, another possible place that the real McCoy got started but I honestly think it's the first one because the guy actually called himself the real McCoy and since that's the saying and the idiom and the expression, it seems more apt to be the real origin of the, and it, it came earlier. Although they both were in the late 1800s, so who knows? It could actually be one or the other or both that helped that saying to catch on. Now, when we think of the real McCoy, we think of the genuine article, the original. And we always think that the original is better than a copy or a knockoff. Think designer bags. Um, People will buy designer bag knockoffs because they're, you know, hundreds or thousands of dollars cheaper. But when people see the original, they know the original from a knockoff. I think Rolex watches. Back when I lived in Dallas, I think that, you know, almost everybody had a knockoff Rolex watch, at least the circles that I ran in. I mean, a couple of us had real ones, but most people had knockoffs. And if you had a real one, you could tell the knockoffs really easily. But it was just funny because so many people wanted to give the appearance of being, you know, and having higher status that they had these knockoff Rolexes, 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 knockoff designer bags, knockoff shoes, things like that. But people that know the original can always tell that from the fakes. And then that just kind of makes you think, really? Really? Are you really posing? So people like to pose. People like to be a, imposters. It, it leads to the whole topic of imposter syndrome and copying and being the original. So my question for you today, is your business the real McCoy? Is it being original? Are you being yourself when you show up in your business? Is your business authentic and original and being itself? Is it Focusing on what's unique about it. Are you focusing on what's unique about it? Your strengths, your genius zone, the area that you can serve people in better than absolutely anyone else? Or are you copying the competition? Are you just being another me too accounting firm, another me too agency, another me too, you know, widget producer, another me too restaurant or bar, another me too shop, me too salon, whatever. Are you just being like everybody else? Or are you really building on your strengths, building on, hey, this is what's special about us. And it usually has something to do with the owner. Believe it or not, no matter how big the business, think Apple computer. Apple computer and Apple would not be Apple if it wouldn't have been for Stephen Jobs. It'll be interesting to see over the next couple of decades how Apple performs now that Stephen Jobs is no longer there. Because what traditionally happens is as a strong originator of a business passes away and passes on, that brand gets diluted. And as that brand gets diluted, um, it usually falls by the wayside. And we could say all things, you know, live and die, you know, grow and, and decline. Uh, it'll be interesting to watch that, for example. So are you being the real McCoy? Are you being who you really are? Because when you do that in our businesses, you can impact so many more people than when you're just doing it as an individual. As an individual, I say, hey, always be yourself because there's nobody that can be a better you than you. The same is true of our businesses. There's nobody that can do your business better than you and serve your customers better than you if you're always competing just against yourself being a better version, a better provider every single day than if you're trying to just you know copy or, or do what the competition's doing or 
you know, be somebody else. We're always better at being who we are than someone else. And when we are being who we are, there's nothing more attractive than that because everybody deep down just wants to be accepted and loved for who they are. Our customers, our employees, our, our partners in crime or our partners in whatever we're doing with our business, our joint venture partners, our partner partners, the people that are our suppliers and vendors, everybody just wants to be known for who they are and, and what is special and unique about them. And when you find that in your business and in yourself and share that with the world, there's nothing more powerful or attractive than that. So let's all go out and be the real McCoy today or the real Hornellstrom or the real pajama grandma or the real whatever it is that you are and you're putting out into the world. Go out, have an awesome day, and I will, of course, be with you tomorrow.